Okay, continuing on in our journey, um, I uh, discovered something about that icon. Uh, I thought, I, I think originally I said I think it has to go with this um, create struct, but that's not true <laughs> because, um, uh, if you recall, a create struct is uh, what is used for the call to create an instance of a, of a class, a you know, window class. So that's this is instance data, <clears throat> whereas uh, the icon is global data. So it goes into the um, not the create a create struct, but the uh, wind class struct, for which I've now added uh, something similar to this. Uh, uh, something to fill in all the millions of defaults. Uh, this is a wind class EX structure, basically. Um, but uh, I want to be able to give it a name. Uh, now, the reason I've done this bit is just to make it uh, copyable. So I don't need to shed it. I had these at first, but I don't need this. So you can you can copy uh, these things around, and um, this member of the struct doesn't become invalid. You see what I mean? If the if the pointer to the class name with a uh, mallet string, like a ts string. Um, <coughs> And I copied uh, to one, from one struct to another. Then the string would part if, if you had it separately here would also get copied, and then you'd have to reset this to something to the new string. The other one could die, and you, you, know, you have to make sure this points to a valid string. So by uh, making this a uh, something, a reference counting type thing, uh, then the string, the string won't get copied, only its reference count will get uh, incremented or decremented. And so I don't need to make special handling for copying. This is all, everything here can be copied, uh, even this pointer. Now, um, we have one function I wanted to add, uh, but I added two. If you want to use an actual handle to set the icon bit, you can pass that in, or uh, you can just pass in an identifier, uh, which uses this load icon, uh, to set the icon part of this uh, wind class EX structure. I think part of it is an icon. I set everything to zero except for. Default cursor, default style, uh, default background brush, white brush, uh, and the class name is passed in. Uh, it's no default constructor. So that simplifies things a lot. Uh, all I need to do then is instead of the norm what I normally do, pass a string in here. The string version could ha I could have specified the icon in here, but then I would have to I would have to specify all of these defaults, and uh, so I, I figured. You know, when you've got a function that has all, so many arguments, really that's a function that takes a struct, and I already had it anyway. There is a register ver version that takes a wind class ex. And that's exactly what this is. Well, it doesn't derive from wind class ex, it has a, a cast, and the cast will return the I shouldn't call this N really, I should probably call it w WC. Let's see if I can do that quickly.
Installation for Okay, that looks better. So, um, so it has an operator when class CX, which just returns a reference to the um, when class. No, nothing copied, in fact. Okay, it didn't. It doesn't have to be a reference. It can be copied too. Uh, yeah. So now that means that that is part of the class already. I don't need to do anything at WM create ever. At every instance of this class will have the same icon. Um, the reason that I have to specify this size twice, I suppose I don't really have to do it twice. Um, in fact, this this part this part really isn't. 100% necessary. What is it? Anyway, uh, the, the reason is um, because this here is, is the so will give you the will set the size of the window, right, to that. But really, what I want is in this case, I want I don't have to, but I would like to have uh, the client area be that size. I, I don't need that one. You can leave it like this. That's fine. In fact, I set the style to this style, which means that I should be able to resize it. Okay. Now you'll notice that you well you won't you won't notice anything it's gone good especially good uh, because what I've done is define a brush in that uh, in this thing here if I took this away and didn't give any brush then it that white back it might appear with a white background but um that's just a coincidence. It could appear with any background color. If I minimize it, bring it back, it's not white anymore, is it? The real default should be black. If I run it, try to resize it, see? So by specifying a default brush, uh, I can resize it and uh, it will retain, <coughs> retain its color. And that's irrelevant for this project, but uh, it might come in handy <coughs> for something else. Alright, so now we have our window. And what we said we wanted to do. Well, first thing we could do, actually, is to add something to the tray. Just because the window's running, it doesn't have to be hidden or minimized or anything. You can still add it's an icon to the system tray. So let's see if we can do that. And we could do it right away at startup. Or we could do it um, on a keyboard event, like here I'm handling it. Uh, escape key to close the window, but let's do it at startup and try to recall how to use that function. Uh, it was uh, shell notify icon something, right? Message and data. If it's the first time we're certainly at this point we, we want to do an add event, right? You get that. Just waiting for the help. The hint file to show up. Something happening. There it is. Okay. So as far as the, what we're trying to do is we're trying to add. Okay. 
hands and then we need one of these little structures so let's just de declare one oh it's already got a nice color uh, data fill that with nothing now what do we need for add Okay. First, we need the size of the strap. It turns out, by the way, this always works. Well, I don't know why. I don't just do it. You can always say this. And that will, that will set the, the first member of the structure to this value. The size size part. No, I don't know if there's any guarantee of that, that actually working. Uh, but uh, for a simple data structure, I, I think it's definitely guaranteed because you could you could continue on with commas and put in every you know every member of the structure. So this will certainly set the first member to uh, to the size and it is the first member of course somebody could flip these around that never happened okay what else do we need H wind that's H wind H I well the icon we want is uh, our own icon, and uh, you know, how do we get our own icon? Uh, well, we could get use get window get class long if we wanted to. Uh, I think there's something like get. Well, we could do load icon. We could do the same thing that this would have done uh, I'm just curious I'm just hang on a sec well I, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the get window long pointer thing the reason I want to do that this way <clears throat> it's because there's there's no reason to for me to suspect uh, that uh, well actually there's really not much difference is there but anyway I I know that this is all this does is retrieve a, a number right. And uh, I don't want to call any load icon, which loads might do some more work. All I want is the handle, so I know that this this exists, and it's um, yeah, get class long h icon, I think. No, is that right? Oh, yeah. We need the H wind and we need the Dex. No, that's window one, not class one. Still need the H wind. And it's a uh, GCLP. Well, it's Okay, okay. It's because I'm using the, the PTR version of this. But the index, that index would be the same as this, I'm pretty sure. Minus 14. Minus 14. See? 
Okay. Um, what else do we need? Uh, so now that's the icon that's going to go on the tray. Callback message, which we had decided on already. Somewhere. It's going to be WM app. Where did that go? Oh, well, it's in the other other project. So we can just make we can just make that a, an a new or something. You call back message. You uh, tray. Who knows what other kinds of messages we might add? If we would add more types of uh, um, application defined messages, we can add them to this new, and then they'll always, always have a different value. It's not really you, Andrew. Let's just call it that. Okay, flags, flags. Flags. Don't know what that means. Flags? The flags are going to be set. Flag that can be set to add an icon to a balloon tooltip. Oh, you can add, okay. So, I guess that's just none. We don't want to, we don't, we don't want an icon on our balloon. Maybe we do later. What else do we need? Well, the, the text message for um, our test. Now, this is an array, right? Call. Yeah. So, um, we need to do like a String copy. Uh, what are we going to copy into there? We we'll use the magic one. Just need a source string. Oh, actually, I want. Uh, I really want the window title, but we don't have the window title yet. Yeah, we do. Don't I have this? We want to be there. Okay, and how about this? I must have. If not, I'll add it. I add these things as I go along as it as it come up. Uh hwin string class name. This could be a no, it wouldn't be public. Okay. Index of set, okay. Well, uh, I don't know what to call it. So it should maybe go together with this. Uh, 
uh, I should really just call it text <coughs> because these, the function, the, the GUI, the thing is, what is somebody going to guess? What would somebody guess? Guessed, get window text would be a, a person's first guess, right? We could add an alien. I'm sure that must be defined. I must have made a function for that. It not in common. It must be in, it must be in here somewhere. Find window. T S get window text. There it is. Now I think we're in the already in the TS window name space, so let's see what happens. Now that's what somebody would would guess at calling it, right? But that's not what I would want to do. I would just want to get text. Let's make an alias function. Same function, different name. Or even text. No, get Because I'm thinking about in the dialog box case, there was get, there, yeah, I have get, get text. For the dialog itself, which gets its title bar text, and get text taking an identifier for a subcontrol. So this function uh, has the same meaning as it does for the dialog, and so therefore I might I might guess that name. <coughs> Uh, that's that. What else? Oh, UID equals zero. Size we did. Icon H pin tip call that message by that's it. Then we need to pass the address to that in. Identifier not found. What is it called? It is a namespace. Let me put it here. This is TS window dot H. The TS window gets included there. Uh, well, I would say, do I need these things? Definitely these two are in the wrong place. I think dialogue is down here for the, probably for the same reason. 
Now I'm going to probably. Now I'm going to just have to say that it's a cloud. Really, it should be declared. I should have made it in this namespace. T TS is a namespace already. Does not take zero arguments. Oh, yeah. Now when I run, really, isn't that what the help said? M I I. Well, I'm sure it's zero. Do I have to include anything here? Oh, Shell API. Yeah. Where? Hmm. I copy the text from here. It's maybe this is the wrong version. Flags that can be set to add an icon to a window. Place to the line. Well, no, let's just not put anything to that. Now there's something else we had to put in to say which ones would be the valid, right? There's U flags, all oh, these ones. So what's valid? This is this is the flag. Okay, wrong one. Uh, the icon is valid. This tick is valid. Oh, everything's valid. So all three. Even though we're not using that method just yet, we could. I want you to see if this works. We, we could turn this into a function. There, you see? And it's it says hello sistray. That doesn't do anything. You know, right click, left click, doesn't do anything. But, um, so now we've added something. Now when I kill this window, it's still, it's still there, you see? And that's because we didn't properly clean up. Once I move the mouse over this thing, uh, the system will try to refresh that picture and it'll realize the window is dead. Okay. So what we need is on close. We could do it here on this callback, but that's not still not really correct. So the best place uh, is uh, when we know that we're when our window is being destroyed. I think that's right. So what we want to do basically is just call the the delete function. And I don't know if we have to pass any what we don't we wouldn't have to pass any data, right? And we can just pass null in that case.
Uh, oh no, it has to recognize what it is. Like the, at least the H plane. And uh, we can tell it that uh, we can set this to z everything set to zero except for the first member. So none of the members of the structure are valid, and we want to delete it. But it should the H win should be enough. <coughs> Let's see. Is it enough? Yeah, the ID is correct. I think it should be enough. No. Oh, stupid thing. I mean, uh, I love the way you can really uh, creatively yeah, work with this now, the way they've got it set up. You know, like everyone would guess to go looking in, in that uh, little box there. Obviously, that you know, system tray thing is a one-off thing. All right, now I'm going to hit Escape, and it worked. So there you go. We've added it to the tray. We removed it from the tray. Now, one more thing: the callback message. What if we get a? So this is sort of step one of just the basics. You know. We've, we've add, added, we've deleted, and now I just want to set up Get this far away so we don't have to look at it. If, so if we get our special message, which I've called tray callback message. And that's going to be uh, for some kind of mouse event. And according to the help, uh, see uh, notification sent. Um, blah blah blah. W param it contains a nothing, zero in our case. L param holds the message. No, it can only be a message identifier, so it's going to be like mouse move or L button down or something like that. I think it's called. I'll just move it. And I'm doing these things backwards, you know, and I'm not doing them properly backwards. We got to put the R values on the left that we won't make a mistake. Uh, an assignment in condition. I actually found one of those. Uh, yeah, what is the. Um, Oh yeah, LP, L param, WM, mouse down. Here I have a big list of them. Ah, uh, here we go. Well, that NC always means non-client, you know, meaning um, meaning for the like for the system. Oh, here, here we go. L button. So how about this message? WM L, left button now. Okay, I want to do something. What I want to do first, instead of closing the program or something, 
is um, we could change the text maybe. Well, no. Nah. I'm going to type all this again. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, we'll do a modify. We'll turn these into functions and so make it easier in a minute. Also, I'm forgetting. I think I should make this default to true. And make these else. And the last else will set it to fall. Okay, so um, again, one of these things, this part's the same. We're not touching the icon. We're not touching the message. But we might want, we're going to change this. So how about we add to our class a counter? What am I thinking? Sure, let's remember. Let's turn it out at zero. Get text. Now that's already a TS string. Uh, so I should be able to just uh, pipe it in there like that and count and do the same thing again so the only valid part of this one is the uh, message the The tip, the tip. That's called the tool tip. So that part of the, of the, of the data structure is valid. And we're calling just modify. We want to make a new one. Now, is that enough? Tip is valid. Changed it. Oh, we've got to increment the count. So every time I click it, it the count will go up, although we won't see it change because you gotta, it doesn't, uh, I've never seen it anyway, change the text. And maybe a little space here. I've never seen it change the text while it's uh, while it's up there. So I think we go, we can one if we click it, we gotta move the mouse away and move it back and see that the, that it worked. I'll try it. Oh dear. Now what? Oh dear. Oh right, right, right. We've handled every message. Okay. Now the reason that why is it one? Oh, because I plus plus it. No. Oh yeah, I did. I, I, I incorrectly copied the same code for the initial one. Alright, now I'm going to click it. 
and go back and it's two. Click it again, go back and it's three. So you can see that uh, it, it is giving us that uh, mouse message to the left button. And I'm going to click the right button and nothing. Okay, so we can receive the messages, we can add the uh, icon, we can remove the icon if we wanted to, we could have hidden the window, but we didn't. We've accomplished all of the necessary goals, all but one. And uh, I think you might be able to guess what that one is, and that's this. Run. Oh, it is running. Why is it running? What's it waiting for? I wonder. Well, I know that. WM destroy. Uh, I think I have to say that I didn't handle this one or return a different value. I forget. So all I'm doing, I'm only ever returning zero here. Let's see. Well, that helped anyway. I pretended I didn't do anything, uh, and so the default handler knew what to do because I don't know what to do. It ignored this and it must have done something else. Alright. Oh, yeah. What it did is it, it passed the destroy, WM destroy message on to the Windows default handler, which completes the destruction of the window. Now the problem again is uh, uh, the taskbar the, the, the task disappears because the um, uh, shell is dead and we bring it back you're going to notice that our uh, icon is not, it's not going to be in there anymore. See? And it's nothing to do with this thing. That it's not there. It's not there because we didn't respond to the special message. So the next, next class, we will respond to the special message. Okay. See you then.